Welcome, everyone. It is Tech for Senior. This is Monday. It is the March the 18th. And what a wonderful weekend it was on the West Coast. For all those of you who are probably West Coasters, we had a gorgeous, gorgeous weekend. And I even got out and mowed the grass. So that was great. Anyway, it's going to be a nice week. Hopefully everyone's having uh, good weather and is safe. We're here today to have, we have a great show for you today. Uh, for those of you who um, are following us, we also have a show on Thursday. So we have, our, of course, our Thursday show and our Monday show. Today is a Zoom meeting, and it's uh, it'll be about an hour long. We have uh, I'm going to talk for a little bit. Then uh, then we're going to have Bob do his security news update. Uh, Chris Gould is here with Jim, and she's going to have has uh, a photo fun taking selfies. Uh, Bob's got three shorts that he's going to talk about, and we'll get to that in a minute. And of course, Ray has, uh, oh, and uh, Huey has uh, has an interesting, um, on managing battery life on your phone. And Ray, of course, has his mu music outro, and then we'll have our question and answer period uh, at uh, top of the hour. So we have a busy show for you today. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, if you, um, now just a few uh, housekeeping things. Uh, most of you got my three emails of our Saturday newsletter. Uh, sorry about that. That's it's it's not spam, and I don't plan on doing that again. But the rules for bulk email to send bulk email have changed in the last uh, in the last few weeks. And the thing I like about Mailchimp is that they're on top of it and they make all the changes for me, and it makes it's my life real easier because we had. Um, Back in when I was doing this in Mesa, we dealt with a company called Green Rope, and they were really bad at this. And a lot of times the mail just didn't go through, but that's not the case with MailChimp. But we had to go through a certification process um, uh, this weekend, and that got done. So everyone should be getting our email now our, 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 um, that goes out for our newsletter. If you don't, please let me know. Uh, but that should, uh, but you only get one. Only get one on Tuesday and one on Saturday. And uh, today is an exciting day for me. Uh, most of you noticed that I popped out for a minute, uh, but uh, I'm saving $150 on my internet services. I changed service providers, and as I speak, they're installing our new system. So um, I'll tell you all about that shortly, and uh, we I plan on making a video about it. But what I would like to say is it just goes back to what I've said over and over and over again is these are changing times and please, please, please look at your service contracts you have with your internet providers because there are some really good deals out there and I'm sure that you'll uh, be able to save a lot of money. In my case, I'm saving $150 a month, which is, is a lot of money. So, so anyway, I'm very happy with that. Uh, we also made a change. We had a request, and I thought it was a good request, was that our uh, premier service that we have, and we put the three videos to, together for you for teaching and educational purposes, we, um, we, we got a request saying we'd like a playlist with only those on it. The playlist we have now that's published is for all the episodes of Tech for Senior and all our uh, premier services, premier videos. So it's a playlist with both on there. Uh, so I've made a new playlist up and that will be just for the premier services. So if you just save this playlist and I'll put it in the chat in a minute, all you have to do is save that. And as we add new videos, um, uh, in our premier, uh, service, it will, that playlist will just bring up the premier videos. Now, yes, I will put all the old videos in there, but that's not, that's a day for a rainy day, not a sunny day. So last, uh, so the weekend was mowing grass rather than doing that, but that will come, that will come over the next few weeks. Um, I don't think, I think that was it. Um, this, the premiere uh, videos today will, uh, Bill James will be doing the uh, Mac tips. Um, Mike Ungerman will be talking about tax credits with EVs. That's a little bit dated, but there's still some good information there. And I'm going to talk about supercharging your Gmail with artificial intelligence. Uh, so, so it should be lots of fun. And that will be played at uh, half past the hour. And I'll put the link. 
in the um, in the chat as well as the link to the playlist. So again, if you just copy the playlist and bookmark it, as we add videos, they're just added to that playlist, so you don't have to do anything, and you won't have to know each individual link. Uh, Huey, are you uh, are you doing okay? How did you get your microphone going? Your camera going? Uh, everything is going. Uh, I'm shutting off my video every once in a while so it refreshes and when it comes back I'm not out of sync but uh i'm still having issues it's it's something to do with the camera and i'm uh now it's a software thing and i've got to see about uninstalling some things out there to see if that helps all right well you got one week I'm, i guess i'm on deck next week but that and then you're on the, you're on so you better figure it out in the other two weeks oh i'm trying i <laughs> Trust me, I'm trying. All right. I'm doing all kinds of presentations and I got to have it working. Working. I don't have oh. you to help me with those presentations. All right. Okay. Bob, how are, how's things going with you? You're ready to roll. You've got a lot of stuff on the show today. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I think we're going to rename ready on, Everything's ready on this end. Good. We're going to rename the show the Bob Gustisha Show with appearances from Ron and Huey. <laughs> I think. So anyway... Ray, are you, uh, <laughs> how, how are things? You Oh, we got Ray's music fix. So Ray and I worked hard this week, and Ray worked hard. I figured it out. So so hopefully the volume control on his uh, outro is better now, right? Yeah, I apologize for the last week and maybe even the last two weeks that there, there was an issue. And uh, I'm still not quite sure what it was, but we, as Ron said, we get a test this morning, and then today's episode should work just fine. Should be good, okay. And then, of course, Chris and Jim, you're back. Are you in your home now? Or are you are you uh, in your studio? We're home in our studio. Yes, having having fun. We have a uh, one RV trip coming up. We went scuba diving this past weekend. We went out on Saturday and caught some lobster and went diving. It's lobster season. Yeah. Is it lobster season then? Until the end of the month. Ah, okay, cool. Very good. All right. Well, uh, maybe someday I'll get down and have some fresh lobster with you in California or Florida. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's great. Yeah. Welcome, and Come we look on forward. Down. Come on down. Yeah, Chris, I've got your uh, I've got your video, and I'll be playing that for you. I've got it uh, downloaded, and we're ready to go with that. Okay. Perfect. And Bill and Bill James, you're uh, you're back in the swing. I'm looking forward to your uh, your uh, gadget on Tuesday. You you're running a string of great ones, so. We've got lots of positive content on your gadgets. So uh, as, long as, you, <laughs> as long as you keep them under $100, that'll be great. But uh, that's good. No, that's great. We, that's we been the goal is to keep them under $100 and to also to make them a little interesting with uh, a little historical data of how they came about because I kind of believe that there's nothing ever new. It's just reinvented. So you'll be with us this Thursday then for the uh, Tech for Senior Live, right? You're on for this. Thursday. I will. I'll be here. So this Thursday, we're going to be talking about um, a class action lawsuit that's been started in California on a um, on a um, Cadillac uh, because the OnStar collected data on this fellow's driving for the past couple of years. And then GM sold the data to his insurance company as insurance rates went up. So the the uh, the collection of data on your cars is a big issue. We're going to talk about that this Thursday. Should be a good good topic to talk about. So we'll see a see see what everybody thinks. But it should be a good show this coming Thursday. So please don't please listen. It, it should be fun. We'll have a good time this Thursday. And Bill, we welcome welcome you this Thursday. Uh, all right, uh, Bob, let's roll. Here is my security news roundup for the week ending March 15th, 2024. Microsoft confirms Russian hackers stole source code, some customer secrets. Microsoft revealed that the Kremlin-backed threat actor known as Midnight Blizzard managed to gain access to some of its source code repositories and internal systems following a hack that came to light in January 2024. In recent weeks, 
We and have seen evidence that Midnight Blizzard is using information initially exfiltrated from our corporate email systems to gain or attempt to gain unauthorized access, the tech giant said. This has included access to some of the company's source code repositories and internal systems. To date, we have found no evidence that Microsoft-hosted customer-facing systems have been compromised. Read more at thehackernews.com. 41 state attorneys general tell Meta to fix their customer support for hacking victims. A group of 41 state attorneys general are demanding that Meta step up its support services for users who have been victims of hackers and account takeovers. We refuse to operate as the customer service representatives of your company, the group writes in a letter addressed to Meta's chief legal officer. We request Meta take immediate action and substantially increase its investment in account takeover mitigation tactics, as well as responding to users whose accounts were taken over. Read more at Engadget.com. Microsoft blocks terms that made violent sexual images on Copilot Designer. Microsoft is working to fix its AI image generation tool, Copilot Designer, after it was revealed by a company engineer, Shane Jones. Jones, tasked with testing the tool's safety, discovered that it could be used to generate disturbing content. This included violent scenes involving teenagers, sexualized images, and biased content on sensitive topics. As we reported earlier, the tool disregarded copyright, churning out images of Disney characters in inappropriate situations. Microsoft has responded with initial steps. Certain prompts are now blocked, users receive policy violation warnings, and safety filters are being improved. Read more at MSPowerUser.com. No, Apple Magic, as 11% of Mac OS detections last year came from malware. As revealed in our 2024 Threat Down State of Malware report, a full 11% of all detections recorded by malware bytes on Mac computers in 2023 were from different variants of malware. The catch-all term that cybersecurity researchers use to refer to ransomware, trojans, info stealers, worms, viruses, and more. That 11% figure may not sound imposing, but remember that many people today still believe that Apple devices including Mac computers, are invulnerable to cyber infections because of some sort of vague Apple magic. Cyber threats on Mac aren't non-existent. They're just different, but different threats still need effective protection. Read more at malwarebytes.com. Over 15,000 Roku accounts hacked and sold online to use people's saved credit cards. It appears that Roku itself was not compromised, but customers reused the same username and password on their Roku as they did with a third-party site or app that had been broken into. Update. Roku is also offering full refunds to impacted customers. Attacks like this are not new, as hackers often use stolen logins on multiple services to see where they have been reused. From there, they sell them to people looking for free access to paid services or, in the case of Roku, to buy hardware using the stolen credit cards. Even if you are not a part of this breach, it is highly suggested that you do not reuse passwords between accounts. Read more at courtcuttersnews.com. Third-party chat GPT plugins could lead to account takeovers. According to new research published by Salt Labs, security flaws found directly in chat GPT and within the ecosystem could allow attackers to install malicious plugins without users' consent and hijack accounts on third-party websites like GitHub. Chat GPT plugins 
as the name implies, are tools designed to run on top of the large language model with the aim of accessing up-to-date information, running computations, or accessing third-party services. OpenAI has since also introduced GPTs, which are bespoke versions of ChatGPT tailored for specific use cases. While reducing third-party services dependencies, as of March 19, 2024, ChatGPT users will no longer be able to install new plugins or create new conversations with existing plugins. Read more at thehackernews.com. FCC probes online retailers over sale of potentially risky smart doorbells. Knock, knock. It's the FCC. Democratic Commissioner Joffrey Starks wants answers about how and why low-cost smart doorbells that allegedly contain glaring security vulnerabilities are commonly available on e-commerce sites like Amazon. On March 8, Starks sent letters to the online retail giant, as well as Sears, Temu, and Shine, asking the sellers to explain how they vet the gadgets they list on their sites. Working together, we must find better ways to stop risky and unlawful products from entering the commerce stream, and from seeing their sales irresponsibly boosted when they are listed online. Responses from the retailers are due March 22nd, according to the letters. Read more at EmergingTechBrew.com. Political operative and firm behind Biden AI robocall sued for thousands. A political operative and two companies that facilitated a fake robocall using AI to impersonate Joe Biden should be required to pay thousands of dollars in damages and should be barred from taking similar future actions, a group of New Hampshire voters and a civic action group said in a federal lawsuit. The suit comes weeks after Steve Kramer, a political operative, admitted that he was behind the robocall that spoofed Biden's voice on the eve of the New Hampshire primary and urged Democrats in the state not to vote. The incident may have been the first time AI was used to interfere in a U.S. election. Read more at TheGuardian.com. This week's must-see on my YouTube channel. Do you really need gigabit internet? Gigabit internet is like a supercar. Not everyone needs one, but for those who do, it's a game-changer. Please watch my video on that topic by following the link listed. Did you know gold, a highly ductile element, can easily be stretched into a long and thin wire? One ounce of gold will yield a wire 50 miles long. 40 is the only number that is spelled with its letters in alphabetical order. You are one centimeter taller in the morning when you first get up than when you go to bed. This is because during the day, the soft cartilage between your bones gets squashed and compressed. Just thought you might want to know. A person always doing his or her best becomes a natural leader, just by example. Thanks to Joe DiMaggio. And that's a wrap for this week's Security News Roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye, and thanks for watching and listening. Thanks, Bob. We uh, will be hearing the Gigabit uh, video a little bit later, won't we? Yes, we will. Right. With some others. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, speaking of someone who always does their best and is a great leader, a great teacher... Of course, that would be Chris Gould, and she uh, is, uh, is of course, going to be talking now about taking selfies and something like, that's really cool and, and how to do that with your smartphone. So I look forward to the video. Uh, let me play it for you, and then we'll uh, we'll reserve if we have... Uh, Chris, will you be able to uh, stay yeah. for the... Uh, after is good. Yeah. Excellent. So we'll do, we'll right deal with any questions uh, later. <laughs> I 
want to talk about selfies. I think selfies are fun. Tip number one, clean, clean the, the lens. lens. <laughs> now, if you've been following us at all, you've seen this before, but I'm going to do it again. And I am going to take a selfie. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm not sure, you might have been able to see how fuzzy the screen looked. I'm going to take a cloth and clean the lens. Now, what lens am I talking about? I'm not talking about these lenses. That's when you take a regular photo. When you're taking a selfie, it's on the screen right at the top. It's just a little dot. And any just the corner of a t-shirt will work fine. I have these little microfiber claws and make sure that's clean. Now I'm going to take the same selfie again. Okay and I will show you the results. So I'm going into Google Photos and there is the photo with the dirty lens. There is the photo with the clean lens. All I did between that picture and that picture was clean the lens. Very, very important especially for selfies. I mean, you should clean this lens too. When you take a regular picture, you should clean this lens, but it doesn't tend to get as dirty as the one that's on the front of your phone. Now, why take selfies? I'm sure some of you are saying, oh, I don't take selfies. I don't like selfies. Well, okay, but I'm not talking about the teenager that is taking glamour shots of themselves. Duck, no, no, no. Duck lips. I say the reason a reason for taking selfies is to have memories with your friends. You're with a group of friends. You want a picture of all of them. You don't want to have to tell one friend to get up and take the picture of the rest of you. A selfie is a way to do that. Or if you're with, <laughs> that's, that's me and Joey at the top, the llama. I, there was nobody around. I'm communing with this llama. I want a picture, a selfie. Or if you're in famous places, you need to prove that you were there, right? So Stonehenge and the Tower Bridge in London, we are going to take a selfie. If you have had to sort through somebody's old pictures, you know that just the scenic pictures are not worth much. It's the pictures with people. And if the only way to do that is a selfie, do it. Now you do need to be a little bit careful. <laughs> Notice in that top one, my arm is in the picture. So you should be using an outside arm. In this case, I should have given the phone to Jim and let him take the selfie. And in the second picture, we did have somebody else to take the photo. If somebody offers to take the photo for you, take them up on it. It will almost always be better than, than the selfie. And why do most people take selfies vertical? Well, I think it's because it's easier to, to touch the shutter button, to hold it with one hand and touch the shutter button. But I like to get the background. I like to get more than one person. I like to take my selfies horizontal. So I wanna show you some other ways to snap the shutter button. The timer is my number one tip for taking selfies, actually. Notice that there is a timer. That is a little clock right there. So if you tap the little clock, you can choose a two second, five second, or 10 second. Now I usually choose two or five, but I'm gonna choose 10 now because I'm gonna keep talking. I, I tap the 10 second timer. Now, I go ahead and tap the shutter button now. Tap it, that starts the timer. And I now have seven more seconds to position the phone and frame the shot. And then I don't have to tap the shutter button. It did it for me when the timer stopped. When the timer stopped. Okay, so where is that on the iPhone? in the camera. I do not see a clock right away, but notice this little up arrow. If you tap on that, it reveals another line of options down at the bottom. 
tap the little up arrow. Now I have to move over. There's the clock. And I will set it for 10 seconds. I am in selfie mode. I, for, I tap the clock. I make sure it's set to 10 seconds. I tap the shutter button. I now have 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> but I did not have to use my other arm to tap the shutter button. So timer, I, that's my number one tip for taking selfies is the timer. But there are others. Did you know that the volume buttons on your phone are a camera shutter button? So if you're holding the phone in such a way that your thumb is on either the up or the down volume button, you can press that to take a photo. Now the timer is going, so it won't take it until 10 seconds. So I guess that's another tip. Turn the timer off <laughs> after you've used it. <laughs> Two tips in one. Yeah, turn the timer <laughs> off after you've used it so that the next time you go to take a picture, it's not, doesn't start the timer. Bonus tip. But those volume buttons, I mean, try it right now on, pick up your phone, go into the camera and just tap a volume button Anybody still have earbuds like these? They have volume controls on them. Remember? There's an up and a down volume. So if this is plugged into your phone, you can use these volume buttons as a remote shutter. Then there's voice commands. Yeah. On Samsung. There's no voice commands on iPhone, but there is one little one that I will show you. On Samsung, in the camera, under settings, there is shooting methods, voice commands, take pictures by saying these words, or show your palm. So if those are on, then you can go into the camera and show your palm, it will start a two second timer. Or a three second in my case. Or better yet, smile. And it takes, it takes a picture. Now on the iPhone and on the Android, if you have the Google Assistant, the Google Assistant is this, those three bubbles. If I go there, and I sit and I take a selfie. Okay, get ready. It starts a three second timer and takes a picture. So on the iPhone, you don't have the voice commands, but if you have the Google Assistant, you can do that. <laughs> selfie sticks, right? Anybody have a selfie stick? I love this one. Number one, it can get really long, hmm. but it can also be a tripod. So you just put your phone in there and then you have this little remote. It's Bluetooth. So you have to make sure that your phone is connected to the remote via Bluetooth and then you can take a picture by pressing that button and this even comes out so I could set this up a, as a tripod a ways away and I can take the picture with the remote button and then the last one is using your Apple watch this is an Apple iPhone you should get into the camera and make sure it's on whichever lens you want. You know, the the extra wide angle is usually good for, for selfies. Okay, so here's my Apple Watch. I go to my apps. I have mine arranged alphabetically rather than in that swarm and you find camera remote. It is showing me what the camera is seeing, what the iPhone is seeing. And when I tap on three seconds, it starts a three second timer and takes a picture. 
So I use that for group shots all the time. Now I just want to show you some selfies and tell you how we took them. So for example, here we are kayaking on the canals of Venice. We have to have a picture of the two of us. That is that. not photoshopped. <laughs> that is not photoshopped, right. Now how did I do that? That was a time that I did use the selfie stick because I wanted to easily be able to just press a button even though the camera was far away. So that was taken using a selfie stick. Um, now this one, Jim was just holding his phone out, taking a selfie. The reason I show you this one is to say if you want something in the background, put some distance between you and the thing you want. And this one is just one to say, hey, if you're going to be in some special places, you want pictures of yourself there. Now, now here is one. I used the selfie stick as a tripod and sat it up and then I used the little remote. Here is the one that we have a group of friends and Jim takes a selfie so that nobody had to get out of the picture. Now I will take a scenic shot also, but there's no way we're going to be there and not get our faces in the shot too. And another, this was just a passerby, you know, we just grabbed somebody walking on the, on the walking deck of a cruise ship. Ah, now this is a special one. If you are, especially a woman, over a certain age, do you notice how my skin doesn't look like it probably really does there? What is it? And I did not retouch this. I did not edit it after the fact. So there's a special setting on some phones to smooth the wrinkles. Right. On the Samsung, that setting is found underneath those two little squares. I camera and it's that little button right there and face. And now you have a slider down here for smoothness. I can turn the smoothness all the way off at zero or all the way up <laughs> at eight. I kind of like it all the way up. And I think it must be on by default because I don't remember ever going in here. And that is our tips for taking selfies. I think it's fun. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, lots of interesting things there. And, uh, I think I'm going to go take some selfies today. It's uh, it's it's a lot. You got me really all fired up about this. That's really cool. We'll probably have lots of questions uh, in the Q and A, so uh, we'll get you to hold your questions. Huey, better battery management in your phone? Is that um, you're gonna learn about that yep. today? And and there's some things that uh, make it a little bit different than what we thought. So uh, okay, I'll go I'm ahead interested. and uh, play the video, and we'll see. Okay, that sounds good. Interesting. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see how we go. Better battery management on a phone. I'm Huey Poplock. The practice of swiping up to close apps on most phones, including Android devices and iPhones, it's now generally considered unnecessary for saving battery time. Both Android and iOS operating systems are designed to efficiently manage background processes and memory usage, making manual app closures less impactful on battery life than previously believed. When you swipe up to close an app, the system may actually restart the app from the beginning when you open it again, which can consume more energy then leaving it in a paused state. The memory management algorithms are optimized to handle app management efficiently and effectively, so manually closing apps may not significantly impact battery life and can even slow down the device by disrupting these algorithms. Minimizing background app refresh does not directly affect switching between recent apps. Here's why. Switching apps. When you switch between recent apps, you're essentially bringing previously used app back to the foreground. 
the app itself remains suspended in the background unless it's specifically programmed to refresh upon returning to the foreground, which is not related to the background app refresh settings. Background app refresh. This feature controls whether the app can check for updates and new information in the background, even when they're not the active app you're using. Here's an analogy. Imagine your phone's apps like people at a party. Switching between recent apps is like having a conversation with different people at the party. You bring them to the center of attention, but the others are still there in the background. Background app refresh is like giving permission to some people to leave the party briefly to check their phones for updates. These updates might be about new messages, news headlines, or anything specific to the app. So, while both features involve apps, they target different functionalities. Switching recent apps manages which app is actively in use. Background app refresh controls whether apps can run tasks in the background to stay updated. However, there can be an indirect connection. Minimizing background app refresh can improve overall phone performance. This can make switching between recent apps feel smoother and faster. In essence, they are separate features, but background app refresh can have a positive impact on the overall user experience when switching between recent apps. General tips to save battery life on your phone. Identify the battery drain culprit. Both iPhone and Android have built-in battery usage menus that reveal which apps are consuming the most power. Check your phone settings under Battery to identify these apps. Minimize background app refresh. Many apps continue to run in the background even when you're not actively using them. This can drain your battery. On iPhones, you can limit background refresh app by app, and on Android, you can put apps to sleep to restrict background activity. Reduce screen brightness. Your phone screen is a major battery drain. Lowering the brightness level and enabling auto brightness can significantly improve battery life. Shorten screen timeout. The amount of time your screen stays on before automatically locking also impacts battery life. Reduce the auto lock timer to a shorter duration to conserve battery. Mastering background app refresh, the key to better battery life. What is background app refresh? It's a feature that allows apps to check for updates and new information even when you're not actively using them. Examples are email, social media, and news apps. Convenient but can be a major battery drain. Why does it drain the battery? Apps wake up periodically to connect to the internet and fetch new data. They use processing power and cellular data if enabled. Some apps might use location services in the background, adding another layer of battery drain. Taking control on iPhones. 
Go to Settings, then General, then Background App Refresh. Your options include Off, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi and Cellular Data. App by App Control. Disable Background Refresh for specific apps. Taking control on Android. No dedicated background app refresh setting. Put apps to sleep. Settings, apps and notifications, or apps. Advanced, battery, enable battery optimization, or restrict background activity. Finding the right balance. Consider which apps you need the most up-to-date information from. Adjust background refresh settings accordingly. Manually open the app to check for updates if needed. Here are some additional battery saving tips. Identify battery drain culprits using the built-in battery usage menus. Reduce screen brightness and shorten screen timeout. Turn off location services and Bluetooth when not in use. Use the low power mode on iPhones. Keep software updated, the operating system and apps. Here's a summary of what we've talked about. Background app refresh is convenient, but can drain your battery. Take control by adjusting settings on the iPhone or on your Android phone. Find the right balance between convenience and battery life. Implement additional battery saving tips for maximum impact. And that's it. Thanks, Huey. That's uh, good information. I'll be looking at the settings on my phone. Uh, good. Very good. Excellent. All right. Uh, Bob, are you ready to start? Yes, I yes, I am. And what we're going to be doing is there are three small videos, text to image, where I use Microsoft Paint to create an image just simply through text. Next, we'll talk about Gemini interaction in Google Docs. That's something new. And last but not least, do you really need gigabit internet? So let's get started and show those three videos. AI in Microsoft's Paint program. Paint used to be a very simple and basic program but it's been greatly enhanced in many of the new releases in Windows 11. We now have something called Co-Creator, which in essence adds AI into the mix in Paint. It allows you to use text to create an image, and you can even choose different styles. I select oil painting, but as you can see here, there are many things that you can choose from. The prompt that I put in is a stone house in the countryside with rolling hills and smoke coming out of its chimney. Let's be surprised together. I'll hit the create button and let's see what it comes up with. There are three images created. Let's just pick one of them and take a peek. It certainly looks like an oil painting. Let's change the dynamics. Let's choose photorealistic. Again, hit create and see what it comes up with. It does take a few seconds. Considering what it does, it's not really that long.
pretty darn good. I like this one. Just a quick little look at what's new in paint. If you don't yet have it, wait, it is coming to a version of Windows 11 and paint will be enhanced with this new text to image feature. Stay safe, stay secure. I hope this helps. Bye bye and thanks for watching and listening. Taking a closer look at Gemini's integration into Google Docs. Let me start by saying that I'm using Gemini Pro, so I'm paying for it, but the integration is definitely here as part of what shows up when I open up a document. And the document I'm looking at is one I created on my presence on the internet. And it has all the links to all the things that I do on the internet. So let's take a look at what Gemini can do. It gives me a summary of what's in the document. And next it says, how can I make the title more effective? Okay, let's go ahead and click on it and see what it says. My online presence is a more concise and descriptive title for this document as it accurately reflects the content within. Good suggestion. I may just follow that one. Next thing it says is, how can I add an introduction or opening statement to this document? Again, it offers the advice. Let me take a look and see what it has to say. And there is the introduction that it comes up with. What are some of the topics covered in your blog and website? A great way to get additional information without actually having to go to any of the links on this document. What are some of the most popular posts on your blog? Most popular videos? Which playlist is most popular? More details on protecting privacy? Any videos are there on protecting your privacy and security? As you can see, there are lots of things that it can help you with in a simple document. And we can keep going and explore every part of what's on that document. Well, if I wanted to spend all day on here, I can just keep asking it to give me the information it suggests. But as you can see, just from these examples, there are lots and lots of things that Gemini can do on a Google Doc. And I'm sure it'll do the same for all the other things that are part of Google. Stay safe, stay secure. I hope this helps. And thanks for watching and listening. The need for speed in daily life. Gigabit internet isn't just about raw speed. It's about the smoothness and reliability of your online experience. Whether you're a professional working from home, a student attending virtual classes, or a family enjoying 4K movies on multiple devices, Gigabit Internet can provide the bandwidth necessary to keep everything running without a hitch. The Business Edge. For business, Gigabit Internet can be transformative. It enables rapid file transfer, seamless video conferencing, and efficient cloud computing. Companies can leverage these speeds to gain a competitive edge, ensuring they can respond quickly to market changes and customer needs. Gaming and streaming paradise. Gamers and streamers stand to benefit significantly from gigabit internet. With low latency and high speeds, online gaming becomes a lag-free experience, and live streaming is as smooth as it gets. This can be particularly important for those who stream their gameplay or engage in competitive gaming. The Future of Connectivity As we look towards an increasingly connected future, gigabit internet will become more of a necessity. With the rise of smart homes, IoT devices and emerging technologies like VR and AR, having a robust internet connection will be crucial to support these innovations. Is gigabit internet overkill? While the advantages are clear, 
It's also true that not everyone needs gigabit speeds. For the average user, a stable internet connection of 100 to 200 megabits per second may suffice for everyday tasks. However, as digital demands grow, so too will the need for higher speeds. Making the most of gigabit internet. If you decide to upgrade to gigabit internet, ensure you have the right equipment to handle it. This means investing in a high quality router and considering wired connections for devices that require the most bandwidth. Conclusion. Gigabit Internet is like a supercar. Not everyone needs it, but for those who do, it's a game changer. It's about assessing your needs and deciding if the investment will enhance your digital lifestyle. If you're someone who demands the best and fastest, Gigabit Internet is waiting to turbocharge your online world. Stay safe, stay secure. The final decision as to whether you're ready to make the leap or be content with your current speed is ultimately up to you. One thing is certain, the internet will continue to play a pivotal role in how we connect, work, and play. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye and thanks for watching and listening. And I'll end this by saying that I am nowhere near gigabit on my internet speed. But as you can see, it really doesn't always require that higher speed. When you consider that I'm doing all of this on 60 up and 20 down, my wife is currently streaming television in the other room, and I'm busy showing videos here. <laughs> and then I have gigabit service, and I'm having all the issues I'm having. So, yes, I'm sure there will be lots of questions about that, Bob. Thanks so much for doing it. Yep. Um, Ray, are you? Do you have some toe tapping music for us today? Uh, not exactly toe tapping, but definitely enjoyable. Okay. Do you need Excellent. to turn something off? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> we we need to say goodbye to our friends over on YouTube. Uh, thank you for coming and listening. Uh, I have put the link to the uh, premier service in our in our chat. Uh, and uh, if you can come back and watch us uh, on Thursday, that's great. Otherwise, we'll see you same time, same place next week. And I'll just uh, say goodbye and uh, stop the live stream. Steve Lawrence, where music finds its voice. I got that tagline actually from Copilot. I was trying to think, what could I say as a tagline to Steve Lawrence? And Copilot provided that. The following information was provided in part from a news article by CNN. Steve Lawrence, a Grammy and Emmy winning pop singer who often performed with his late wife, Edie Gourmet, as the duo Steve and Edie, died on March 7th, according to a statement from his publicist shared with multiple outlets. He was 88 and died in Los Angeles from Alzheimer's disease. Born Sidney Leibowitz in Brooklyn, New York, Lawrence took to music early as the son of a cantor and both sang and composed songs in his youth. He was a teen when he won on the television show Arthur Godfrey Talent Scouts, which gave him the opportunity to sing for a week on Godfrey's radio show. Now, under the stage name Steve Lawrence, the smooth balladeer released the single Point Sienna in 1952, soon after he became a regular on Steve Allen's show in New York, which became The Tonight Show when it went national in 1954. It was there he met singer and fellow cast member Edie Gourmet, and the pair married in 1957. Lawrence was drafted by the United States Army the following year, where he sang with the Army Band. As a solo artist, he had hits that included Go Away Little Girl, Pretty Blue Eyes, and Party Doll. 
He and his wife were known for their songbook of American standards at a time when rock and roll was becoming more popular. Lawrence was also an actor who appeared in numerous films and other television shows during his entertainment career, including The Blues Brothers and The Nanny and Two and a Half Men. The couple appeared together in the Broadway musical Golden Rainbow in the late 1960s, and the song from that show, I Gotta Be Me, became well known as part of their act as a duo. As Steve and Edie, they became popular on the variety TV show market and on stage in Las Vegas, while also maintaining solo careers. Gourmet, who shared two sons with Lawrence, preceded him in death in 2013. So today's clip is from March 30th, 1969. I did the math, and that's 55 years ago this month when Lawrence appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show. I think you got a winner there, Ray. I mean, those from our generation realize they don't make singers like that anymore. Nope. <laughs> Brings back memories. Yes, and, and the, the great, great comments in the chat. The audio was great. Everything was great about it. Well done. Thank you. Well done. All right. It is top of the hour. It is <laughs> uh, time for our Q&A. And it's, uh, we've had a great show today. If you do have to leave early, please remember that we do have our premiere uh, video airing or uh, showing uh, at, at half past the hour. It's episode 157A. And I did put the playlist in the... Um, in the chat and all you have to do if you click that playlist it'll bring you up to the video it'll bring the list up just bookmark it and then you that's all you ever have to do because as i add add videos into that playlist uh they will just automatically add to that list so you don't have to do anything else so that's all you gotta do is just bookmark that one one item and that uh, that'll be uh, that will be great and ron uh, those are th those shorts or those short uh, videos that are there in the premiere are great for different user groups to use uh, for parts within their meeting or use several of them for their meeting. So uh, by all That's means, right. uh, we welcome them to do that. Right. Oh, for sure. And and I designed them that way so that you so there's no there's they're just strictly the and they're all timestamps in the description. You'll see exactly. So you just click that and go right to the video if you want. And there, there's no advertise, nothing in them. They're just, they're just uh, the three videos that we've chosen. So they're made for educational purposes, and we encourage you to use them over and over and over again. Just maybe mention us once in a while. That's always nice, right? Huey? If someone says it's tech versus yeah, senior, absolutely. It's it's always helpful. So that's great. Um, all right, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of questions. So let's uh, Steve Parker go ahead. Yeah, wasn't Steve Lawrence part of the Carol Burnett show? Uh, yes, he was on a lot of variety shows in those days. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if he was a regular attendee, but certainly he was on there quite a bit that, that I recall. Yeah. Sharon, go ahead. Yeah, I like the information about the selfies. That was very helpful for me. Didn't realize about the front camera. Hello, duh. <laughs> uh, the, the other thing I wanted to say was, I'm not sure how well MailChimp is working for you all. Let me tell you my experiences. Um, on October 23rd, I saved the email. I sent a letter back to the admin asking if the newsletters could come in and give me the option to choose plain text. Never received a response regarding that email sent. Then I also put it in the chat last time I was on this meeting and never received a response. So I'm just curious about, is anyone monitoring the chat for questions? Is it too difficult to I've never made a newsletter, so I don't have any idea. Is it too difficult to make a newsletter option for plain text and or HTML? That's a good question, believe... Sharon. And I don't, um, I don't really. I'm, I, I use the default settings in Mailchimp, so I don't change that, and uh, so I can't answer that. Maybe Chris does a newsletter. Maybe Chris has some better ideas yeah. on that. Chris, do you, can you answer that? Uh, well, I can I can try. I can say what I do. I don't use Mailchimp, but I use something very similar. It's called a Weber, and plain text would be a a template. Uh, when you go to create a newsletter, you tell it I want to use a certain certain theme or template, or and plain text should be one of those. Should be very easy. I, be I believe Mailchimp does have 
a choice uh, individually. So if you want to receive it as a text, I believe you can. I'll it have to look into how you set that up. It, it doesn't come up for me at all. How about immersive reader in age? I mean, I want I want to receive your guys' your newsletter in oh. plain no. text. I'm oh. not composing a newsletter. I just want to know how can I get plain text on your newsletters? Oh, is it oh. difficult to do? Because when I also sent the email to, to you guys at admin, I never got a response either. And that was October. So uh, oh, a breakdown you... somewhere. All right. So, so a couple of parts of that question. Yeah. Um, and that is partly um, a problem I haven't quite figured out yet. But w the admin at techforsenior.com no longer works. We use... Uh, we use tech for senior info at gmail.com is the is the uh, is the information and how to get to me um so that that no longer works that that email address that you use i didn't get a bounce back uh yeah but it just isn't there it isn't it isn't it doesn't exist anymore so so if you tech for senior uh info at gmail.com is the is the one that uh, that you would respond to but but I don't, I'm not sure about that. I, and I'll do some investigation on that and see it, see see what uh, see what. Um, and do you have someone monitoring the chat? Because that never got answered either. I put it in there well since I didn't get it on the email response. Are the chat on the show today? Y yesterday, last time. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, put it in there. and never got a response. So I figured, well, well hey, let, let me bring it up verbally. Nope, I'm I'm looking at the chat all the time and monitoring it. Maybe I just didn't know the answer. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll work on that, Sharon. Great, thanks a lot. I appreciate it because I do nope. love the newsletters. I do love the information, but there's a lot of images that I really don't care for, the cartoons or images or whatever. I just want right. the meat, so to speak, meat. not the potatoes. The meat. Well, maybe not the potatoes. <laughs> lots of potatoes. Right. You all right. You can uh, just tell it not to show your your email uh, app should give you the option to show images or not. That's true. That it still has a placeholder, Chris. It still has yeah. a placeholder. Yeah, isn't in Gmail, isn't there a thing at the bottom where you, you can just get it as plain text? You can just click on that, and isn't there an option? I the only way I've been able to do it is do double work. You send me the email, I select all, mail it back to myself and say plain text. I don't want to uh, have to do double the work. All right. I'll thanks. have a look at it. Cool, right. thanks. There'll be Mike. How are you? How's the car working? Uh, right now, it's just sitting in the garage. Uh, hadn't been running almost a week. I'm saving money, I guess, by not driving. <laughs> hey, is it spying on you? Do you do you know all I, those things? I don't know. You know, I, you better come to the show on Monday, and you better give some thought on that because I was thinking about you this morning. I thought, I wonder if this is spying on Mike. Hard to tell. The reason I raised my hand is in the premiere, as people will see if they go to premiere today, I talked to, in the past about the tax breaks for electric vehicles. And uh, the tax code has changed significantly since that, that was done. It's a good history of what did take place. The biggest change that, that is found out there now is for the vehicles that qualify. It actually is done as a discount at your dealer. You don't have to file for the tax credit now. So you'll fill out some extra paperwork when you buy your car or do your lease. And then the dealer is going to give you the credit right there and then at, at point of sale. Makes things and, a lot easier. And that's the same in Canada, Mike. They uh, When I bought my, uh, both the, well, the one I have now, um, I didn't have to do anything. It was all done for me. Happened right at the dealership. So good news. Thanks, Mike. Uh, and Marsha. Hi. I'm. I'm new. Let me just make sure I'm on. Yes. Are you, on, are you here. new here? Are you new here? Brand new. Oh, My welcome. 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 Where, where are you from? Well, I live half the year in Florida, not far from uh, Chris and Jim. Ah, but, okay. And I'm in the Deerfield Beach Computer Club, which is partly how I found out about you and through my good friend Irv Gershkowitz who helped me get on to you today. Uh, and then the rest of the year, I live not far from Bob Gasticha in New Mexico. You're and kidding. about 150 <laughs> miles north of him, which sounds yep. an, like an enormous lot here in Florida, but out in New Mexico, that means we're neighbors. Ah, <laughs> so, you got it. <laughs> yes. Um, I did have a question. 
about how I can easily get on. I was having so much trouble. I was going to um, what gave me the stream of your program today, but wasn't actually a Zoom set up like this is now. I, I mean, I wasn't shown on it, nor with the options of doing things until Irv sent me the um, newsletter with the link on the newsletter. Everything else I tried didn't seem to get me to this. Now, what is the easy way to get to you? It wasn't just a matter of going to techtheseniors.com because then all sorts of things came up and only the newsletter gave me a good connection. So if you look at techfreesenior.com, there is, if you go on the top part of the the uh, the webpage there, it, there's the uh, Zoom, there's Tech for Senior Show. It's, uh, I'll just bring it up here and I'll show It's, um, if you go on the, um, yeah, if you go to on the top of the site here, I'll just, um, let me share the screen. Um, Come on. Basic. All right, I think you can see my screen here. Just let me put this back up here. Now, can you see the see our website? No, we're not sharing you're not, your screen. You're not sharing. You're not sharing yet. Oh, really? There you go. Did there you go? All right. Yes, I did get that page. Okay. Just a minute. I got to bring it up. Hold on. There you go. It's now. So if you see at the top here and you come over, it says uh, Tech for Seniors right here on the right. And it yes. says if you click on Tech for Seniors, it opens this up and it gives you the Zoom meeting and the links right here. Okay. So, okay. so if, if you click... have, yeah, if you click the, the link here, it will give you the Zoom meeting and take you right in. If you have yeah. Zoom, that's the meeting ID, and the meeting ID never changes. So this but is that is a, not a clickable link, you know. She has to oh, copy it and paste it. Into the have browser. To copy this. Yeah, that that was my next question. Yeah. Yep. So you just copy this over and then paste it in that will, and then the meeting ID. If you have Zoom installed on your computer, right? I do. And then all you have to do when it asks you for the meeting ID, this meeting ID here. Just, just bookmark this or copy it down. It never changes. It's always the same. So all you have to type that meeting ID in, and it takes you right into the Zoom meeting. Okay, thank you. I, okay. There it's was perfect. nothing clear about that how that was done Yeah. Uh, in, in your opening pages there. In fact, okay. I wasn't even sure since I was told Tech for Seniors, and then I kept seeing yeah. Tech for Senior without a plural. I well, wasn't you made it. Sure it was the you same. made it, though. Yes, thanks to Irv. <laughs> there you go. Ron, you made question. Them. Yeah. With the meeting ID, don't you also need a password? No, 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 there's no password. You just go into the waiting room and then we let you in. Okay. There's no password. So, so that, so that, and Marcia, and it never changes. It's the same meeting ID, the same everything. Now, the other thing is too, is if you, if you're traveling around and you don't have a, you can't make a Zoom meeting, then you can watch it because we broadcast this over to YouTube. So it's on our YouTube channel as well. Yes. And, and that's what I did get on. I saw yeah. it on the YouTube channel, yeah. but as I said, I wanted to actually be on with you guys and yeah. say hello, et yeah. cetera. Good. Well, thank you. And now you see how. How easy, it, well, it is easy now you figured it out. And so spread the word, talk to your club about it and spread the word and bring some more people. That's great. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and don't forget to su subscribe to our newsletter. I did that. Oh, I good. did that figuring maybe that was the only way I'd get on in the future. <laughs> okay. But it would be helpful if on that main page you just had on there, you wrote which things to do to easily get on to Right. A, a day streaming on Zoom that day. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Marcia. Jenny? Well, for me, the simplest thing is to go to your newsletter and then just click to for the Zoom meeting. That's right. really simple to me. That's right. And that's I'm being clickable. dumb. That's the only way I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, but Marcia's going to figure that when she gets the newsletter because that'll, that will, uh, that'll be right there for her. Thanks. Um, 
Chris, I have a question for you before you, I know you've got a question. I've got a question. Okay. You first. No way. <laughs> uh, let me go first because go other go, people. Go ahead. I, I am always looking for ideas for what to put into the fun with photos. And I certainly want to talk about things that you all want to hear. So give me some ideas, put it in the chat. What I'm covering in fun with photos is taking photos with your phone, making them look better, all the ways you can edit, and then managing them and what all you can do with them with Google Photos. So those those kind of three things. Looking for ideas. Okay, what's your question? So on your remote that you use there on your tripod, uh -huh. does, does it work for videos as well? Can you start a video and stop a video with that remote? Yeah. If yeah. In, if you're in video mode, yeah. You have to on your phone get into video mode yeah, first. Yeah. Then then it will stop it, and it, start. It, yes, I, it I, does. I'm, okay. It that's does good. on mine. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That's really cool. Because if I'm making videos, uh, if I'm making videos, that's a that's a that's an easy way to do that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, and the Samsung has a start video. You know, one of those voice commands yeah. does start and stop video also. And you yeah. can use uh, works on your Pixel Six with voice command very well. Very well. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Bob, I have a question for you. Um, who thought about Microsoft Paint? I haven't used that in years. And I just brought well, it up. Microsoft Paint, Microsoft Paint has been restored with functionality that was never part of I Microsoft know. Paint. It I've is getting saying... to be a program that, that you can actually do uh, layers. You can re erase things. You can put with layers, you can add things that aren't part of the picture. There are all kinds of goodies that are being added to paint. Exactly. And, you know, I was just playing with it since you did your video. And I've been making um, AI images like crazy. And it's yep. pretty darn good. Like, I'm impressed. Like, I think this is pretty darn good. I'm glad you found this because I never use paint. And it's only in Windows 11, right? Yes. But... But but a good reason to move up to Windows 11. I think this is going to be fun. I look forward to doing some a lots of AI with this. This is this is good. Thanks for that. That's really interesting. Uh, Jim Glass, you mute it, Jim. Uh, this is for Chris and Jim. Uh, a suggestion: you might want to do something on. <clears throat> Composition, you know how you know the best way to you know put the pictures together using background, foreground, etc. That's a good one. Okay, yeah, I'm. Yeah, all right. I probably need to take a class in that myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm. I just I snap pictures for memories. I I don't try to be a professional photographer. But yeah, a little bit of composition is a good. And it's the rule of thirds. We do teach that. <laughs> the rule of thirds. Yeah. Oh, and and some composition. And the yeah. fact that you can crop after the fact to change the composition. Now, so okay. We do teach that. Okay. Do and there's some, there's a bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff you can do. Once you learn it, you just sort of do it automatically. Mm -hmm. You know, as yeah, like you rules, as you learn the, the techniques. Oh yeah. Other people do that, and they do it quite well, though. Too, you know, when you want to really get into creative photography. But no, oh, that's that's great stuff, Jim. Carl, go ahead. Yeah, uh, another suggestion for uh, Chris and Jim is. Uh, Showing some examples between using portrait and photo. The different, the different modes. Okay, yeah. you you mean when you say portrait, are you just talking about the orientation, or are you talking about the option on the camera to take a portrait photo rather than a regular photo? Yes. The, op the option. Yeah, we 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 do have a video on that, but I don't know that I've ever done a fun with photos that incorporated that. Yeah. Okay. Good. That'll keep her busy. <laughs> <laughs> and Ray, Ray, go ahead. I got a question for you, on batteries. Have they done any re reports that will tell you how much longer a battery will last if you charge it over to 85% as compared to 100? 
some of the articles I'm reading say don't pay any attention to that. Other ones say it's important to do it. So I'm not sure if tests were done, but there's certainly a difference of opinion. Looks fun for me. Okay, I'm not sure I'm going to change it to 85. Write a few words. Not going to make a difference. Yeah, I just I plug mine in, and when I'm ready to use it, I unplug it. So, uh, I and uh, normally you don't have to change the battery, but every couple of years anyway. So, okay, thank you. Right. And Sharon, you have yeah. I, I sent messages, and Chris replied. I sent a message that I use the portal to send photos to my doctor of maybe some something on my skin that has erupted so they can see that. What I'm finding is some of the photos are way too large. So I have to send a smaller size because the portal has a limitation on the size that you can send the attachments to. And so that I wanted to make sure that we can discuss how we can use it more efficiently, even in medical purposes. And yeah. then the other thing that I mentioned that I've seen on a lot of people, so many of us have so many duplicates that we really need to know the benefits of removing those duplicates and why we should consider it. Not just storage, but also the fact of finding something later and having to go through them all. It's time consuming on top of it. So, a, you know, a reminder to us of let's clean up our act, so to speak. <laughs> Thanks. So Sharon, just to follow up on that, Got you're it. talking about Facebook's portal, right? The portal that fits on your TV. No. Is no. Medical <laughs> portal. Oh, a medical portal. Oh, okay. All right. Medical okay. portal. You want to All send right. something to your doctor. You want to show them you got a problem. You want to say, hey, okay. do I need to come in? Here's the image. And they say, okay, well, you can only have a certain size limit. Right. Okay. Uh, Marcia, Earth go View, ahead. Earth in View yeah. is a great free program that allows you to take an image and change its size. I don't want to have an add-on. I want to use, you know, what's maybe built into our systems, whether that be Apple or Android. Thanks. Okay, Marcia. Yeah, it just happens that this week when I'm coming on for the first time happens to be the week that I'm trying to decide on a new Apple iPad and I'm vacillating between a 9 and a 10 and wondering whether I need more than just the 85 or 86 gigabytes. If I have to go up to the 230 or whatever it is in gigabytes, which is like $150 more with either the 9 or the 10. And I don't know, since it's my first time, I don't know how many of you use uh, iPads or what, but anyone have any thoughts on, on either of those issues? Which is better, a nine or a 10, if there isn't much price difference? And whether I need to go as a regular, just general user on, on the iPad, whether I need to go up to that 130 something gigabytes. So Marcia, Marcia, a lot of that depends on how much of the information you store on your device of especially photos and videos and how much you send up to the cloud. If it's up on the cloud and you really don't care about it still being on your device, you may not need as much as you think. But if you'd like to have it available immediately on your phone, then of course, the more storage you have or the bigger storage you have, the better it is. And that's where you have to weigh, do I need it or don't I need it? If it's in the cloud and you don't mind going to the cloud to get it, you don't need all that on your phone. The other thing, well, Marcia, a couple of yeah. things. Well, I've got a couple of things because I just bought an iPad. Uh, and so I did some research on what you just asked about. Uh, I, my choice was between the nine and the 10. And I opted for the ninth generation iPad. Uh, the ninth generation still has the lightning connector. 10 has the USB-C connector on the bottom. That was one of the big things. And the other thing is the difference between nine and 10. Uh, nine uses, well, I also wanted uh, cell ac access so I could use it anywhere as I went. That costs extra about a hundred dollars more, and uh, and I opted uh, to to get that. I, that was something that was very important to me. And the nine is LTE, and the ten uses five G, so it would, would be faster uh, to get the ten. But I didn't want to spend that extra money. And I just read an article today. In the next few weeks, uh, it's rumored that uh, the next generation iPads may be. Uh, 
uh, uh, released or announced anyway, because the fact that there are some sales on the ninth and 10th generation uh, uh, iPads. So that means if something new gets released, there'll be more sales on the others. That's right. And I can tell you that's right correct, now, but they don't they 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 don't give a lot of really good deals no matter how old they are. Right. But but Huey's right there. There is definitely a new iPad coming out. They we were talking about it probably on our Thursday show. And so it's that means there will be lots of sales on existing iPads now. So yeah. be, just just be careful. Do you have an do you have a do you have a, a store, an Apple store near you? Yeah, there's not one not far away. It's also a nice thing to go down, and they they have all of them there, and you can test them and look at them and feel them and have a look at it and get get a good idea yourself on that. Yeah, I was doing that at uh, at Costco. Mm -hmm. um, they had there, and and actually, what I have now, the iPad I'm on with you guys on, has 128 gigabytes, right. and the only other. Apple iPad I see currently with 128 is uh, an older form. The um, oh, which one is it? Uh, iPad Air. Mine mine is uh, eighth gen, not the Air, but the Air is the only one that seems to offer the 128 now, which is odd. Yeah, it's 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 64 or 256, right? And right. Uh, I, I I do have the 64, and my old one, which I can't update anymore has 128 and I just ran out of uh, storage with it because I'm doing a lot of, I'm, I'm watching a lot of podcasts and it downloads them. So I had to delete a bunch of them, but they want, it was easy to delete and opened up that, uh, uh, that space again. So I, I, I manage with 64, but I did pay, I think it's three, I pay $3 a month, I think, and did get some extra storage on iCloud. Yes, I did that. Does does using Google Photos automatically send them into um, cloud storage? It sends it to Google uh, to the uh, Google Cloud. Hmm. If okay. you have the setting turned on, if you have it, yeah, 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 then it auto then it automatically uploads. Yes, if I have it, the Ron, setting we're, for that? We're, yeah, we're we're running. we're 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 running way right. over time, so yep. we yeah. really have to. Otherwise, Thank people. You. People need to have a little bit of a rest before the next video that comes on at half past. So we got to give them a rest for five minutes. So anyway, I want to thank everyone for coming. Thank you, Marsha, for being here. Thank you for everyone for coming for, to the show today. We will see you this, hopefully this Thursday on our Thursday show. And if you don't know how to get there, it's in the newsletter. Just at the very top, there's a clickable link. It says how to find the Thursday show. Click that and it'll take you right to our Thursday show. Otherwise, we'll see you back here in a week's time. Thanks for coming, everyone. I hope we answer some. Hope hope we answer some of Marcia's questions. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. I did. Thanks. Mm -hmm.